going on YouTube. Uh, this is going to be my first Mac tutorial that I'm going to put up to hopefully give you guys an idea of what you can do uh, with your Mac to make your life a little easier. Uh, things that I've noticed um, that I do uh, that make my life a little easier for not only me but the rest of my family. Um, some of these things I'm going to point out um, you've got to be really anal about um, for them to work the way they work for me. Um, in some instances though uh, you can choose your own way of doing things and it'll probably work out better for you. Um, for you. Uh, the first tutorial we're going to do is we're going to talk about getting video that uh, you may download or uh, may have been from a friend uh, that gave you a file, home movie, whatever, um, that you not only want to be able to watch on your computer in iTunes, but say maybe you want to watch on your regular television uh, with your Apple TV. Um, and you're going to need a few things to do this. Uh, the first thing we're going to need is a program called Handbrake. Um, if you search for Handbrake uh, Mac up here in your Google search bar, this is the first page that's going to come up. And you'll see that there's a download for Macintosh OS X. There's a download for Windows XP Vista N7. There's even a download for Ubuntu. Um, so you can pick and choose whichever your interface is. This will work for Windows as well. Um, but we're going to focus primarily on the Mac one. So once this is downloaded and installed, um, you will have in your applications folder this icon that looks like a pineapple with a drink beside it. And here is what the program looks like. Um, now, you've got multiple different things that you can do with this program. Uh, but we're going to, like I said, focus on taking source material and turning it into something that iTunes likes. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find our location of our files we want. So we're going to use this file here. Um, first thing you want to do is you want to open up Handbrake. And with Handbrake open, we're going to go in here and we're going to select Ambush. Okay. So it's looking at Ambush. It's going to turn it into an H.264 or X264 uh, video codec, which is very important you select this one. Um, it'll be an MP4 file, and it's going to save to the desktop, as you can see here. So we're going to go ahead and hit Start on this. It should be pretty quick. I've got a pretty fast machine. Um, more cores equals faster. Uh, processing and transcoding. Um, I'm using eight cores right now uh, and 16 gigs of RAM. So if you've got less, it may take a little bit longer, but I have specifically chose a short episode to give you an idea of what you're getting into. Um, once this is done, it will give you that little noise and say that it's down, it's your queue is done. So we're gonna hit OK. So you can go ahead and close uh, your source material and you can actually close handbrake you don't need handbrake anymore okay so now we've got this file over here you can see that it's named exactly what it was named before uh, season one episode one ambush mp4 and that's the nice thing now in this you want to right click and hit open with and you'll notice that iTunes isn't even listed so you're gonna go to other and you're gonna select on iTunes click on iTunes here. Your screen may look a little different. It may have icons. It might not. I'm on 10.6.8. I find it to be more stable, less fluff. Um, but you can go ahead and select iTunes and then hit open. Uh, what's going to happen is the video file is going to play, which is nice. But you'll notice that it's here and not in, say, regular movies. So quick tip. You don't have to flip back and forth between screens here, but if you want to get it here with your regular movies, what you can do is go up to the name here in iTunes, and right click and hit get info. Now in here, you're going to find the name and all this other stuff that you normally do. Now you can choose whatever you want to put in here. It's up to you. Normally I change the name to whatever it is that I, I want it to be. 
Um, you can go into video if you've got a season number and an episode number for, say, like a TV show. Um, and then under sorting, there's all sorts of other information. But here's the important one under options. Forgetting about volume adjustment, start and stop time, and all this other stuff. You've got media kind. You want to select what it is. So if it's a home movie, you want to put it under home video. Uh, if it's a music video or movie or TV show or, say, video podcast or even an iTunes U kind of thing, you can organize them how you'd like. Um, this is more of a TV show, even though it was a movie. Um, it's not really a movie. It's a seven-minute long uh, BMW commercial made in the uh, early 2000s. And, uh, but I would categorize this as a, as a TV show. Um, I would come in here and I would go season one. I would go episode one. Uh, I would type the name in here, Ambush, and the show would be BMW Films. Sorry, I've got a mic sitting on top of everything. Okay, so now that we've set this up, we're going to make this Ambush. And we've got options for TV show. You can select movie if you like. Uh, but I did want to point out season one, episode one, episode ID is Ambush. The show is BMW Films. Now we're going to hit OK. So now the show should show up under television shows, under BMW Films, episode one, Ambush. Now if you go back and do episode two and you name it just like this, you'll see everything shows up as that episode it'll go season one and then episode numbers and then season two would fall under the same thing you can even get album art for this and change the album art um, so if we go in here and hit get info um, you can add your album art so if you went on google or scanned in a photo or something that you wanted you could absolutely do it um, gives you a basic idea of how to get your videos from uh, a folder in here with BMW Films or anything. It shows you how to take these things, which this was a WMV, um, and you can pretty much convert anything. Um, AVIs and whatnot, you can convert. Um, it tells you basically how to get from a media source that's not going to work well to one that is going to work with iTunes. Now, here's the best part because this is set up under iTunes. And it's playable in iTunes. Anybody with a Apple TV, you know, the tiny little box that you can watch Netflix and stuff on, um, if you turn on home sharing, which is up here in preferences, share my local network, home sharing computers and devices, update play counts. Okay, when you turn on home sharing and you've got that whole thing set up. What you're basically doing is, while iTunes is, is open on your Mac, you can then use the anything that's in your iTunes library can be played and streamed over to your Apple TV. So now that BMW Films episode Ambush is in here, I could walk over to my television, turn on my Apple TV, and go under Computers, and then select the TV show and watch it without having to uh, have it on a hard drive where the Apple TV is or anything like that. It's all in one place. And I wanted to point something else out. Now I'm not 100% sure and this may fail on video so my apologies. Um, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to get some information on this. So this video here is 64.6 .6 megabytes. Now let me get info on the new one. 53.9 most times while using handbrake the way that I do, and I'll show you my settings here, um, MP4 file, well, let's, you know, let's pick the source, let's do this again. The chosen, we'll hit open. MP4 file with H.264, frame rate is same as source, it's variable, and a constant uh, quality. These are the basics that were set up when I got the program. I really didn't mess with it too much. You can go above and beyond if you wanted to. Um, but under normal circumstances, this kind of encoding will always be, almost always be, a smaller file than the original file that you have. So not only are you saving space, 
um, but you are uh, you know compressing things and making it easily accessible across all your devices, especially if you have multiple Apple TVs. So now this one's done. It was 56.6, and let's go ahead and get info on this one, 39.7. I know it doesn't sound like much in this age of you know two terabyte hard drives, but when you have things like 76 gigabytes left on a 400 um, of your media drive, every little bit counts. Now, um, with that, my organization on this, you've I've got things. I've got my iTunes library on a separate drive, and I've got different uh, television shows and pictures and documents and movies. This whole thing is is bundled together as one. So all my media is in one place. So what I'm doing is I'm allowing myself to not only view my movies and my music videos and all that other stuff, concerts and whatnot that I have, um, but I can also listen to my music and I can look at my pictures. And I can do it all on my couch. So um, this is the first quick tutorial, give you an idea of what you can do to make sure that you can share your media across your entire home using an Apple TV and a Macintosh computer with some free software. Um, hopefully I'll be making a few more of these and putting them up for you. Uh, so stick around and uh, check out the channel. Give me a, give me a thumbs up if you learned something. Uh, feel free to write your comments in the comment section below and uh, please subscribe.